Now then, it's a campaign that this morning has followed very closely. Last summer, we were first joined on the show by Charlotte Caldwell, whose son Billy has severe epilepsy. Well, Charlotte was pleading with the government for a special prescription to licence medicinal cannabis oil for her son. You cannot take away an anti-epileptic me medication. You cannot stop it abruptly. Yeah. It has to be weaned in the first instance. So I'm saying to Nick Hurd this morning, please give me back Billy's medication today because he needs his medication. This is not uh, anything to do with recreational, but you are just signing his death warrant. So please give it back. He's not a doctor, Philip. He's a minister. So he should be listening to the doctor in Canada. Well, after the success of Charlotte's campaigning, the law was changed and last week marked one year since the prescription of medical cannabis was legalised in the UK. But despite the change in the law, many doctors are still hesitant to give out the drug and we're joined this morning by Dr Javid abdel Monem to separate the fact from the fiction. Good morning, Good morning to you. Morning. So first of all, I guess we should understand that what, what is it in this cannabis that's supposed to help medicinally? Well, there are, there are lots of compounds in cannabis. It's a whole plant, but the, the ones that people believe are active are called cannabinoids. There are two that are most important. It's CBD, mm -hmm. you may have heard of that. And there's another called THC. Now that's the one that can cause a high. Mm -hmm. It can cause ill effects. But CBD is the one when in combination people think could be the, the ticket. Okay. So what is the current law in the UK? Well, the court, as you said, it changed just about a year ago. Yeah. The law says that specialists, not GPs, that's the important part, specialists can prescribe cannabis-based medicinal products only if other treatment options have failed and if they feel there really is a benefit. So there must be NHS guidelines in place for prescribing cannabis. What do they say? Yes, now the guidelines are there. The guidelines are very clear. Medicinal cannabis can be prescribed only when clear published evidence of benefit exists and other treatment options have been exhausted. Now, those are in draft, but that's pretty clear. It makes it very, very difficult to, for example, you're certainly not going to get it from your GP. Right, OK. So but you, you, this, is, this is the cannabis with the THC in it, the, the, because CBD you can, you, can, you can buy. Absolutely, it's available over the counter, CBD. That's, that's deregulated in that sense, and THC is still the part that's illegal. But the, you know, the evidence over which works in what combination for which diseases is, is what's still not so there. So why aren't the doctors... Prescribe. Why is it not being prescribed? It's a combination of things. Firstly, that guidance, it's pretty clear. If you, if you haven't exhausted other treatments, uh, you shouldn't be doing this. Secondly, it called for more evidence. There really isn't enough evidence out there that's utterly clear about one agent versus another. And thirdly, it's the infrastructure. For example, Billy uh, had it prescribed, but it cost him £1,000 a month. The import licences, the customs, the, uh, the protocols for moving the substances into the UK just aren't there. So it sounds like the evidence in the infrastructure needs to catch up, really, with what the law's saying. Um, the THC bit, just explain, why is that so helpful? What is, what's, what is so, it? So there you go, Holly. So THC, I, I, I say as an acronym, it's the high causer. That's not necessarily as helpful. It's the CBD that is. Now, no one knows how or why, and it's certainly the CBD that has more suggestion of help in chronic pain, in epilepsy that's difficult to treat, and so forth. But uh, there are also people who wish that both should be used in combination. Right, you okay. say there is a, a, a lack of evidence. Is there evidence ongoing? Are we actually looking at this now? Because it's essentially... It's a natural product. Absolutely, and it's been around for thousands of years. So there was a call for evidence into eight research areas. There is soon to be announced potentially a trial, a project looking at about 20,000 patients to follow them over the next two years. And that's being brought about by a group of patient advocates, a certain charity, and actually a, a, a cannabis, medicinal cannabis production company. And, and, and the NHS uh, group that looks over this has said it would be great to have this evidence. So watch this space. Um, is, there, is there currently sort of a range of conditions that we know that it's helpful for? Absolutely. I mean, it's actually licensed in the NHS for use in vomiting after chemotherapy. Mm -hmm. It's also licensed for um, severe epilepsy. Uh, but again, this is only when other usually licensed medicines have been uh, exhausted and the patients aren't getting the benefit from what's already uh, around and more commonly used. Mm -hmm. Now, People who buy the CBD over the counter, they uh, say it's useful for sleep, 
for anxiety, for potentially for appetite. People use it as creams for their skin. A whole host, a myriad of ailments. But that's slightly different, that over-the-counter sort of use. Do they work? To I mean, are they, are they good? The evidence just isn't there. But does that mean they don't work? I mean, because there's a lot of online evidence of sort of testimonial where people Absolutely. will say, oh, my God, this has changed my life. So is that... Can I, we count that? As I, well, listen, I'm, I'm, a, I'm... Listen, if it... CBD, not known to cause harm. Right. If it works for you, placebo or otherwise, I'm quite happy for you to carry to on. Because it can get very expensive. I mean, it depends sort of the, the, what you're buying and how much is in it and this, that and the other, because it varies. And I think that's the problem that people find. They're going, going well, I don't know what's right for me. I exactly. don't know which one to buy. Exactly. And the over-the-counter CBD is actually only a food regulation type item. So that isn't thoroughly controlled like mm. a medicine. Sometimes you don't even know what's in the bottle, to you, be honest. Um, so you mentioned that uh, it's, uh, this, is, this has been ongoing for thousands of years. Uh, people have, have, have taken cannabis um, for, for ailments, for obviously for other reasons. Why is it taking so long for this? I mean, there, there are mums and dads desperately concerned about their mm. children. Why is it taking so long? I think there's a sociocultural element. Doctors just aren't used to prescribing this, one. Two, the evidence just isn't there. Uh, the last guidance that came out in August really did almost put a hold on it, but that's going to deliver. Potentially next week, they'll finalise the guidance. I don't think it'll change much. Really? Mm, well, I think there'll, so. be a, there'll be a lot of parents who are extremely yeah. upset about that. I'd be that, happy to be sure. wrong. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I hope you right. are. Well, thank you. Thank you. Pleasure. Lovely to have you thank here. You thank you very much. Thank you for coming in today.